here in uh, LA. Bags lost. <laughs> With Mark Burke from MMA Hub. Um, what a fucking nightmare. It's not been a good day. Apparently they're in Frankfurt. So, uh, yeah, not a good start to the week. A um, couple of interviews out the fucking uh, out the window already. But show them what's going on. Show always goes on. <laughs> <laughs> Disaster. So here we are in Las Vegas. Where's Mark Burke? What's happening? Still no bags, but apparently they're coming in at <laughs> half nine this evening. Uh, fingers crossed. From Frankfurt. Flamingo and Venetian. Hello, Jonathan Schrager. From MixedMartialArts.com. How are we doing? How are we doing? So is that your camera then, is it? Is that what you yeah, need to film? Cool. No, no. So you've got a bigger one there. Yeah, oh, this, is, this, is, this is real handy for field recording. This is the one I'm doing my uh, UFC vlog on. Oh, you, are you going to do it with me? Yeah, that's why I'm recording you now. Right. <laughs> why, why do you look puzzled, Johnny, when I've just asked you that question? Well, I wonder why I'm on a Neil Siri vlog. My name is not Neil Siri. <laughs> Yeah, morning, Johnny. What are you doing? We're we're doing a bit of prep this morning. Very early, up at six. My bag came. It did. I feel the All my equipment. I'm feeling because I could sense the stress inside you. So yeah. I'm actually feeling the pressure alleviated from myself as well. Now that you're now that the bags arrived. There's the logos. Lovely. Lovely, Johnny. <laughs> John has a great interview last night with Jessica I on Skype. So check that out if we put this up. Yeah, absolutely. And Lorenz Larkin. And Lorenz Larkin as well, lovely fella. Big, big name, I believe, in the coming 18 months in the World's Awake division. He's so. going to do big things, and obviously we're both fans of Jessica. We believe she's um, a genuine threat to Ronda. So, yeah, yeah, too uh, impressed with that. And obviously yourself and I are going to be securing lots of good content today, hopefully. Yeah, going to see Cyborg, Catherine, hopefully Siri. So, yeah, stay posted, folks.
get a guy like that that's taller than me, uh, that's where I that's where I lay the hammer down on these dudes. I mean, I have power uh, with both hands. You know, I can finish a fight on the feet. But obviously, I have my wrestling. You know, I, I feel like I put this guy on his back. We've seen him get taken down in fights. We just haven't seen him held down on his back and, and controlled on, on the top. So uh, I feel like I can either finish the fight on the ground. He's talking in Brazil. Can I have, have a, can I have your fan support, please? And all this. Bullshit. What's what is that? That's women's shit. Well, not, that's even. That's a that's that's disrespectful to women. That's that's I don't know what that is. That's that's coward shit. Is what that is. So. Is this the blueprint Obviously, we have we've Conor McGregor, Chad Mendes. You know, how do you see that fight planning? Man, I, 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 I'm a terrible chooser. I can't do it. Uh, Cause I like everyone that fights, man. I respect everyone that do what they do. Um, like I said, with like Chad, you know, he, he, he's a he's a maniac, man. He's tough, super athletic, strong. Take people down, great wrestler. If he does his thing, he takes them down and works what he wants on the ground. I, you know, I see it, you know, Chad all day. But uh, you know, if Connor does what he wants and keeps on his feet and just puts him apart and just takes control of the fight, it's gonna be a counter fight. So I just think it depends where uh, in place the game plan. But I wouldn't mind having them both like collide together so it's like tops turby back and forth. That'd be even better. But uh, you know, I just I can't wait for fights. Be a great fight. What's the outcome on Saturday night? You know, I, I think Chad Mendes will, will get it done. Um, you know, I think for the sport and for the sake of this Jose Aldo fight, I, I think I hope Connor Connor wins. But um, I, I think Chad Mendes and his experience, I think, will be the difference in wrestling. Uh, however, I think Connor will will come back and, and be stronger from this for sure. And uh, and we will eventually see him wearing that strap, whether at 145 or 155. Chad Mendes didn't get a full camp, which I mean it doesn't really scare me. Mendes is always in shape. That dude's like always, you know, six pack abs ripped up. Um, I, I feel like McGregor's style is a little different than anybody fought, even than Jose Aldo. McGregor stays long range. He's a big 45er. Um, he's not going to be able to outpower him, out wrestle him. I think it's going to be it's going to be a tough fight for both of them. And this is uh, McGregor's biggest challenge. I mean, he hasn't fought really nobody in the top five besides, uh, you know, I mean, you can argue Seaver or Holloway, but. Um, that wasn't the really top 10, top 5. So this is going to be fight to pick. I thought Conor matched up better against Jose Aldo. I think Aldo was the fight for McGregor. Uh, I've seen Chad Mendes dominate the best that this division has has to offer. Uh, I just think that wrestling is going to be very difficult for Conor. Conor knows how to defend. It's a matter of can he defend early. If he can defend early, this fight will change. But if Chad's able to secure takedowns early in the fight, then I think it'll be difficult for Connor. But if Connor defends early and starts to make doubt creep into Chad's mind, then I believe Connor will have way more success than we think. Connor just needs to maintain distance, keep Chad on the outside, and use his movement. Since he's gotten into the UFC, Connor has actually taken to stalking people. He walks. He also doesn't move his head as much as he needs to in a fight against Chad Mendez. He cannot be hit by these overhand rights that Chad throws. He's got to make some adjustments. But if he makes him, he'll be fine. Welcome back to the MMA Roadshow. Uh, we're doing something a little bit different here. I've, uh, I, I swore I wasn't going to have an Irishman <laughs> on to, uh, to talk about Conor McGregor because I pretty much already know what's going to be said. But I broke down because I like my man Neil McGrath. He's a good, he's a good man. <laughs> TalkingBrawlsMMA.com. And uh, we're doing something a little bit different here. I, I believe, I, I haven't heard a lot of podcasts uh, recorded right from yeah, press row of a live fight. Yeah, yeah. But I figure what better way to do that. We're here at Invicta FC 13, uh, taking in the fights. We've got a nice front row seat here. We've got uh, Invicta FC star yeah. Alexa Grasso sitting right in front of us. <laughs> Featherweight World Championship. We're going to be going live to Vegas in a moment to speak with Niall McGrath from TalkingBrawls.com. But first, let's sample the atmosphere from last night's weigh-in. Niall's been talking to some McGregor fans who've made their way to Vegas for the for the night and the fight, and also to some other MMA journalists to see how they think this fight's going to go. I think 
By the way, I think it's a huge fight, not just for Irish mixed martial arts. This is a huge fight for the world of uh, mixed martial arts and combat sports. World tours, press conferences, YouTube videos, fights, pre-match fights, you name it. Uh, and finally, the night is here where the pretty much most of the country will be staying up till the wee hours of the morning to get a glimpse and see if Conor McGregor can put his money where his mouth is, albeit against a different fighter than we expected. I'm delighted now to be joined on the line live from Las Vegas by Niall McGrath of TalkingBrawls.com, who was lucky enough to be over there savouring all the atmosphere. Good morning. Well, it's good morning for you. Good morning for us. It's later for you. How are you, Niall? <laughs> Good evening, good morning, good day. I'm not even sure what time it is anymore, Reggie, to be honest with you. Time doesn't matter in Vegas. You should know that. There's no such thing. There's no windows. It's all blackout and it's 24 hours a day. It must be incredible over there, Niall, is it? It's absolutely uh, insane, Reggie. I've never really seen anything like it in my life. The, the atmosphere at the Wayne's today was just sensational. I think even a lot of my colleagues here, the, the U.S. reporters, were in awe of uh, what the Irish crowd brought to the day. You know, there was singing, Fields of Arthur and Roy, Ole Ole. It's just been absolutely crazy, and it's uh, uh, it's just really going to be a fantastic event tomorrow night. I think we're all getting excited now for the way in today to see um, what happens in the corner job. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and get a coffee in our Lost Tooters mugs, if we can retrieve them. Yeah. We might have a morning smoke. You'll probably have about four in the time <laughs> I have one. You're an absolute nicotine junkie. Uh, and then we'll probably... Uh, well, should we head over to the MGM? Do a bit yeah, of get, research? Get a bit of research, done a few interviews. Fighters. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Don't look at my uh, dot teeth. UG. Jonathan Schrager here from MixedMartialArts.com. Let him get settled for a second. Actually, I had a question for you, Matt. We were talking uh, in a pre-fight interview about your idea of the demotion to the prelims and resetting your mind and resetting your career. Was this the fight tonight that you wanted to have? Do you feel that this was the performance that really will deliver you, you know, back on track to the title shots? This well, is I... this was the event that we do. We, he, he should have made that walk. And respect the child for making that walk and showing up. Um, but in my opinion, Jose is, Jose is gone. If it comes back around, we'll discuss it then. But right now, this is my night. This is Ireland's night. This is Team Straight Blast Jim's night. My coach, John, my family, everyone that's been with me. This is our night. What the fuck? Hey, hang on. It's a right, massive weekend of mixed martial arts. Just <laughs> the blog I'm doing, we're going to do like a, a review. Yeah, no, point in what do you think? What I think, it was a fucking amazing week for mixed martial arts. arts. <laughs> John the Trager from the UG. It was nearly as good as when Ricky Atten was in 2007. Yeah, well, he's going to say that. Uh, the BBC, of course, <laughs> I think the week has um, basically got to us. We haven't gone out in the right nights, obviously, with a lot of work to do. But uh, this is Sunday night after the Conor McGregor showdown. And look. We're here. And no one to be We're seen. Right. For TalkingBrawlsMMA.com in Dublin, Ireland. Dublin. <laughs> she just goes, Dublin. They're definitely sick of the art. There's a building there, I swear to God, it's going to fall down. Look at the two of them. I swear to God, look at that. Unbelievable. What's going on, man? It's crooked. They're both about to fall down. Look at them. Look at them. I think we should contact someone, man. Ring 911. Mark Burke, I think we should contact someone. It was your suggestion in the first place. <laughs> I've walked around the palace all day and I can't find Caesar. This is weird. The next day after the night before. So, my friends. My pleasure. Ireland. 